22nd, 2012. And we thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend with Greater New Hope Church International. We'll hear from Pastor, from Minister Barnes this morning. Her message is entitled, Seek Kindness. The background scriptures will come from 1 Samuel 9, 1 through 13, with a focus on 7. The, she will be speaking from the New King James Version. Again, 1 Samuel 9, 1 through 13, with a focus on 7. She'll be using the New King James Version of the Bible. Again, we thank you for joining us. Please open your hearts and minds to be fed and filled with the word of God. Know that the Lord gives strength unto his people, and the Lord blesses his people with peace. Psalms 29 and 11. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, choir, for those songs this morning. They were blessings unto me. The theme for today is to, the, the theme is show kindness. Show kindness. Uh huh. And you have your scripture. So if you could please turn that to those scriptures, which is 1 Samuel, 9th chapter, verses 1 through 13. And again, I am reading from the New Revised King James Version. When you have it, say amen. Now David said, is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness to, for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when, he, so when they had called him to David, the king said to, to him, are you Ziba? And he said, at your service. Then the king said, is there still not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, there still is a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, indeed, the house of Mahar, the son of Amnon, uh, in Lodibar, all these names, guys, stay with me. <laughs> then the king sent and brought him out of the house of Mohar and the son of Amnon from Lobar. Now when Meshachabeth, the son of Jonathan, and the son of Saul had come to, to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then said, then David said, Meshachabeth, and he answered, here is your servant. So David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore all to you of the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, what is your servant? that you should look upon such a dead dog as I. Yeah. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You, therefore, and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Meshavah, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, according to all that my lord, the king, has commanded this servant, so will your servant do. As Meshavah said, said the king, as for Meshavah, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Meshavah had a, had a young son whose name was Mike, Micah. And all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants to Meshavah. So Meshavah dwelt in Jerusalem 
for he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both feet. Seek kindness. Seek kindness. Father, I come before you right now, and I ask, Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I ask, Father, that you bring back everything that you, you, you bought to me, Father, in this study, and allow me to share it, Father, with your children. Allow me, Father, to give them what you gave me concerning this showing kindness, Father. Help, Father, right now, Holy Spirit. I release me unto you. Work, Holy Spirit, according to your divine will and your divine purpose. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So, we say, show kindness. And we might say, well, that might be easy. It, 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 you know, in this situation, after all, David was the king and Jonathan was his friend. So, well, okay, so he shows a little kindness to, 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 to his friend Jonathan's son. So what's the big deal about that? that that's easy to do, isn't it? Yeah. But that's not all of the story. Yeah. That's not the whole story. See, in fact, what happened was David was reared by Saul. Saul bought David up like he was one of his own. Saul, King Saul, loved David like he loved his own son. Saul and, and, and David and, and Saul's son, Jonathan, became like blood brothers. They were very, very, very close. So David, because he loved Saul so much, everything David did, he did because of Saul. He wanted Saul to prosper. He wanted Saul to look good. Yes, he he, everything that he did. When you read Samuel's first and second books of Samuel's, you'll see it for yourself. Everything that David did was because of Saul. Yes, he did. As David grew to manhood, David became very skillful in everything, but especially in war. He was actually a warrior, and he, he went to battle and fought a lot of wars, and out of those wars, David always won. Why? Because God was with him. Yeah. Now, what yeah. began to happen was that with David, even though Saul loved him, the seed of jealousy began to creep in on Saul. Remember, the Bible tells us wherever envy and, and, and strife is, in other words, je jealousy. Wherever there is jealousy is there, every evil deed is present, including up to murder. Jealousy will do that to you. So Saul began to allow his, his, his he getting older, and he didn't kind of fell out of the grace of God because he didn't kind of not been as obedient to God. He didn't got pulled away from God at this point in his life. And because of that, David continued to follow God, and David continued to prosper where as Saul was failing in things. And so the wise men, if you will, began to creep in and began to say little things to Saul about David trying to show you up. You know, he young, he, he vigorous, he's got all these things going for him. He's trying to make you look bad. And that, that, that began to seek in the Saul. Now, huh, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back for this jealousy for Saul seems to be one day the women were singing their song and dancing and praising. And they sang this little song and did this little dance about they, Saul killed his thousand, but David killed his ten thousand. And that thing pushed Saul on over. It pushed him over the edge. As a result, Saul decided to get rid of David and ordered numerous attempts on his life. We're still on seeking kindness. Still on that. What you may stay with me on that. We're still on seeking kindness. So we know right now that this thing ain't going to be as easy as it appears just from our initial reading, is it? Not going to be as even. So even though Saul continued for years to take David's life, David never.
never tried to take revenge on Saul. David never started talking negative about Saul. David always talked about Saul as the king and God's anointed man. Regardless of how he was, he was hunting him like a dog, y'all. He was hunting him down to kill him. He wasn't trying to play with him or just put him in the prison. He was trying to kill David. He wanted to take him out. David had plenty of opportunities that he could have gotten revenge on Saul. He could have killed Saul. He walked, he ran up on Saul a whole lot of times because he was a great warrior. See, Saul, God gave David that skill set. <coughs> so he knew how to plan and organize things and, and put people in traps. And he had plenty of opportunity to kill him. But every time, he decided to show kindness. Amen. Think about it. Amen. We get upset because somebody's talking about us. Yeah, we get upset because somebody disagrees with us. Yes, like we ain't got a right to have our own opinion or something. That's right. We get upset and fall out of love with people because of things like that, don't we? Yes, Just imagine what poor David must have been going through. Here is a man that he loved like a father. Who reared him like a son. Yes, and now for no reason other than jealousy, he's hunting him down to kill him. Can you just imagine the, the dynamics of that? Yes. What he was going through Terrible. in his heart. Yes, Some of us probably would have gave in and just died. Saul yes. wouldn't have had to kill us. I mean, think about it. Those of us that are in here that, that your mama is still alive. Just think about it. If all of a sudden mama wants to turn and start hunting you down and trying to kill you. Amen. How would you feel? Number one, you'd have mixed feelings, wouldn't you? Yes, you, would. you wouldn't know whether or not to run from mama or to run to That's mama. Right. Right. You wouldn't know, know what to do because of your love. That's right. This is the same thing was happening with him. He had the opportunity, but he didn't take it. Look at, let's look at some of the, one of these opportunities for yourself. Turn to 1 Samuel 26. And Minister Moore, can I get you to read that? 1 Samuel 26, verse 5 through 9. I am reading from the King James Version. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had sit. And David had beheld the place where Saul lay. And Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of his host, Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. Then answered David and said to Amalek, the Hittite, and to Ab Abish, whatever, son of <laughs> these, these names. Zeruah, brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul, to the camp? And Abisha said, I will go down with thee. So David and Abisha came to the people by night and beheld Saul lay within the trench mm. and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people laid around laid round about him. Then said Abisha to David, God hath delivered thy enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear, even to the earth at once. And I will not smile I will not smite him the second time. He's going to kill him the said, first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he did. And David said to Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's mm. anointed and be guiltless? Mm. So this is just one of the times. When, when, when Saul was delivered unto David's hand. Yes. But David, because of his love and because of his his kindness, he could not and would not kill him. And look what he did. He even restored him. <coughs> he said, this is God's anointing. Yes, sir. How many times have we, have we fallen out of, 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 of relationship because of, of things that we disagree with with a pastor or minister or, or, or sister in the body of believers? have a disagreement with us about how many times have we fallen out of relationship and start calling them everything but a child of God. We sure enough wasn't calling them anointed. These are some great lessons, ain't it? This sure 
showing kindness is a, is a great lesson, ain't it? He could have took his life. This, his, his armor bearer said, I'm taking him out with, with one blow. He said, I ain't going to hit him but one. And everybody sleep. He's standing right there over him. He, they could have took him out and, and walked out and nobody had never even known that he even did it. But David knew it. David knew it. Why? Because David was a member, as, as you study about David, you'll see that David was tenderhearted. He was forever forgiving. See, you can't show kindness unless you learn to forgive. Forever forgiving. However many times, how many times ought we to forgive? A day, a day. So today, they talked about us and we're supposed to forgive. This afternoon, they still talking about us. And you done walked up on them. What you supposed to do? Tender hearted. Show kindness, right? Okay. I just want to make sure we're getting there. Now, we've got another relationship that's going on here. Remember I said Jonathan and David were very, very good friends. They were close. They, 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 as a matter of fact, they were closer than their brothers. Yes. Okay, they were, that, they were closer than, than, than family. As a result, Jonathan helped David escape yes, so many did. times. Yes, Jonathan was kind of like in the middle, if you will. Yes. Jonathan would go and talk to his daddy about Saul and try to convince his daddy how, he, he how wrong he was. Yes, he, he would also go and talk to David about his dad and try to make him see what's really going on with daddy. I don't really understand. He's getting older. You know, I'm just, just, just paraphrasing. He's getting older, and, and, and he didn't let some wrong uh, 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 information yes. come to him. And, and, but he really still loves you, David. So Jonathan was kind of like in the middle. And he helped, like I said, on several occasions, he helped David to escape. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan and David made a covenant with each other. Yes, they, did. they made a promise to show kindness. David promised him to show kindness to his family. Look at 1 Samuel, 20th chapter, verse 11 through 16. Ms. Moore, can I get you to read that? Not just to me, your no. friend, not just to me who've been there beside you and then helped you, but also to, my, to, to, the, to the enemy who is yes. my father. Show kindness. And he made a promise to him that he would do this. They made a covenant right then and there. David never forgot that, that promise. No, he didn't. 
How many times have we forgot the promise that we made? We have taken vows. See, David never forgot it. Why? Because David knew that, that what, the, what the word said. He knew that God said that if you make a covenant, oh, other words, a promise, it is best that you keep that promise or a vow or don't make it. If, if you can't do something, don't be opening your mouth talking about, yes, yeah, sis, I'm, I'm going to come to a choir rehearsal. It don't, don't, don't do that. If you know you can't come, don't even promise to come. Okay? Absolutely. Say absolutely no. Don't make, even make a, pro, a vow. Because God holds us to those promises. David knew that God was holding him to the promise. Yes, he does. He knows the promise. What about us? What of, which ones of our promises have we, or vows, have we kind of laid aside? Which one of our promises have we made that we've broken? What about the promise of marriage vows? What about those? If, if people were not breaking that yeah. vow, there would not be so many divorces. The Bible says in sickness and in health, yes, in richer for richer or for poor, yes, whether you agreeing or disagreeing, yes. <laughs> don't say you're going to agree every day. Whether you feeling like you're getting affection and attention or not, Amen. that's a vow that you yes. made before God. Yes. And because we made that before God, we must take it serious. Yes, Lord. He says that the only reason why we can get a divorce is adultery. But we don't have to get a divorce because of adultery. Because we can be just like David and show kindness. Yes, we can. And forgive, can't we? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes, we what about the vows we make to our employers? What about those vows? You say, what vows do we make to our employer? To be at work, thank you. To come to work on time. To go to work and, and work. Yeah, and work. You know, you getting paid for eight hours. The employer then vowed to pay you for eight hours. Now you done work two and a half hours, and the rest of the time you want to run back and forth to the bathroom and have a thousand bathroom breaks that make up the other 5.5 hours of the day and get upset because the employer want to write you up because you're not doing your job. You made a vow to go to work and work for eight hours. Now, if for whatever reason the, there's a blessing that's restored and we don't have to work for four or five hours of the day and that's okay with the employers, then that's okay. But if you own a job, you're supposed to go on the job and do the job that you've been paid to do. Amen. Amen. Yes, That's a vow. Yes, Lord. A promise. 